2016. Uh, in the uh, master plan, we describe how we have every intention of reissuing those <coughs> bonds, and those bonds will be spent to repair the distribution <coughs> system on the flat. Um, the original bonds were, I think, for $30 million, approximately, and we hope to raise at least that much money. Yes, um, what we have calculated in part of the master plan, we um, have costed out the improvements on the flat, needed on the flat, um, and a few other things at about $55 million. Uh, what we see on the flat is a system that is uh, very old. Um, in many cases, it's substandard. Uh, we have, in some cases, inch water mains, in some cases one inch water mains, they're just really substandard in a lot of parts of town and very old. And those really do need to be upgraded. Right now most of our leaks, we have about 200 leaks a year, down from 600 leaks a year, thanks to the NRD program. Um, but most of the 200 leaks a year that we have now are down on the flat. You're going to run on Harbor Street, I think that's good. Uh, I'll continue with the next question. There's 25 questions, so most of the night. Um, is this project a no-go without BAO and RD funding? In our system, there's no such thing as a no-go. We have to repair the system. It has to be replaced. All of the things that we mentioned in our master plan and in our grant applications have to be replaced. If they're not replaced with NRD funding, then we have to seek other sources. Um, and a question later on, I talked about those other sources that we've looked at. But quite frankly, the source is the ratepayer. Now, you're going to be have very difficult uh, time with all of your other projects. I understand from Mr. Kinnean, there's something like 80 projects out there that you have to look at. I will guarantee you there's no other project that if, if it is not funded, is going to require a ratepayer. Guarantee you that, except for the one that Have you vetted any other options besides construction of the treatment plant? Yes, we have. Um, we commissioned a groundwater availability study over a year ago that looked at potential in developing groundwater sources in South Butte to offset Basin Creek supply. Uh, they weren't there completely, and in this case, that they were uh, very expensive because you have to pump it. Basin Creek, you don't have to pump it. We've also looked at transferring Basin Creek water to our Feely plant, our big old water treatment plant, plant in Feely. We found that impractical because it has to go over some hills, and some uh, just very difficult engineering wise, very expensive. And then we would have to run those transmission lines across land that we don't own or have any easements on. We also looked at building a one large water treatment plant right at the Colorado Hill tank. Uh, that was considered it not feasible because it would cost we cost that out about 80 million dollars. So we didn't think that was feasible at the time. We also would have had to uh, abandon our water treatment plants at Moulton and Big Hole. They're to us they're new plants that are 20 years old. Uh, in our way of thinking, that's that's brand new. We didn't want to do that either. So yes, we have vetted other options. How much effort has been expended in costing the treatment plant? Please provide the costing info. Uh, we have assembled a team consisting of Dow HKM, Pioneer Technical, Water and Environmental Technology, and Montgomery Watson. Uh, that team has extensive experience in water infrastructure developments. The treatment pl plant cost estimates have been developed based on this experience, and the costs are in included in that master plan. So we can go through those, but they're all in there. We, we spent extensive time on this, and uh, the people that we have put together, the professionals we have put together, not to get water treatment plants this size, and we, we know the cost. Uh, what are the water quality differences between Basin Creek and Silver Lake? Please provide any historic sampling data, especially the TOC concentrations. I'll pass this out. 
As you can see from the chart, in the first chart we've compared Basin Creek water with um, Silver Lake water. Uh, generally speaking, when we get total organic carbon levels above 3 milligrams per liter, we start to see um, increases in disinfection byproducts that uh, can't exceed the limits. Depends on some other factors, for example, you know, the usage in town, how much we're using, the age of the chlorine in the system, and so on. But just a general rule of thumb, if we see over 3 milligrams per liter of POCs, we start to see violations in our in our water for uh, haloacetic acids and, and the other disinfection byproducts. As you can see from the chart, Silver Lake in its raw water stage never exceeds those TOC standards. They're well below the TOC standards. Basin Creek, uh, of course, does exceed at times generally in the summer months, but they do receive. Uh, interestingly, in the second table, you'll see our treated water system, uh, both Bolton and Basin Creek. And at times, our treated water exceeds the standards for total organic carbons. For example, um, just this week, I believe, we had something like a 8 or 8.5 TOC out of our big cold river plant. Um, you, you can see from the chart. Silver Lake never even approaches that. In some cases, it's not intended. We think there's several reasons for that. One of them is, uh, you know, generally speaking, Storm Lake and Twin Lakes, two of our major feeder uh, systems, are, are pretty much above tree line. Um, most of the water that comes into those just does not have the pine beetle problem. And a lot of those trees at those upper levels just aren't a lot for pine or spruce and power. Also, up at Georgetown Lake and Silver Lake in that area, there has been extensive logging of pine beetle killed trees, which we haven't seen, you know, up at the Molten and the Basin Creek and the Big Bowl. So I think that's the reason for it. But you, you can see, especially on total organic gardens, Silver Lake water is head and shoulders above everything else that we, we use. It's just better water. Uh, what is the cost difference between building plant at Basin Creek versus building plant at the Tiffet for Silver Lake? There is no cost difference. They're both, both, both the same for the water treatment plant itself. Now, there are some other things that we have to do. For example, with Silver Lake, it would be a brand new system, so it would take brand new pipelines. Basin Creek, we have pipelines in place. We can continue using those if we have to, and that would save us some money. Um, but treatment plant in and of itself is a treatment. Uh, next question, what are the ramifications of not using Basin Creek as a municipal supply? And number eight, what is the process to change the water right on Silver Lake for public domestic usage? And what is the time frame for such a change? I'll answer both those questions at the same time because I think they're very similar questions. Um, let me start off by telling you that uh, today we met with um, Tim Davis of DNRC. Terry Eccles of DNRC, Brian Gartland of DNRC, and Jamie Ellis of DNRC. Along with our uh, water rights attorney, Bill Driscoll, Big Tally from Dow HKM, Paul Babb, Dave Palmer, uh, Chairman of the Council of Commissioners, myself and Dan Denny. <coughs> anyway, we discussed the change process. 